Um, we're here today with um, Mrs. Newman and her daughter Emily. Um, I am Dr. John Mew, and um, I would think the best way to introduce <laughs> the history of this case is to ask Rita Newman to say why she brought Emily to see me in the first place. I brought Emily to see uh, John Muir um, after he very successfully treated my son some years ago and um, he had a very uh, severe overbite, uh, I think it was, and he had a very weak chin and jaw and Dr. Mew brought out the jaw and uh, corrected his lip seal and he looked wonderful after the treatment had finished. So I had no hesitation when I had Emily some years later to bring her along to see Dr. Mew. When I first saw Emily, I could see that she had a very severe malocclusion. Um, most people would not notice it at the age of eight. You don't usually see how damaged the appearance is until the child grows up at the age of 12, 13. But at the age of seven or eight, you can understand what is going to happen. And her upper jaw was very, very small. It was also set back. And she had what we call a class three malocclusion. That's when the lower teeth are in front of the upper teeth. That doesn't often happen, but it nearly always produces a very unattractive face, particularly in women, as a woman with a flat face and a protruding jaw looks unattractive. And I could see that this is a problem. And so obviously I started by treat my treatment by enlarging the upper jaw and moving it forward. At that time she had no cheekbones, but by bringing it forward, one creates quite nice cheekbones. And, and she was exactly a very good patient. We had our usual hiccup, mm -hmm. bit of lack of wear, mainly the problem, being that she did not naturally keep her mouth closed like her brother did. So we spent most of our time on just that, trying to train her to keep her mouth closed. The advance is um, very simple. We do a sequence, which we call stage one, two, three, and four. We start with stage one, which is essentially the appliance to widen and move forward the upper jaw. Um, it does that merely by turning a small screw, which widens it, and by wires placed behind the front teeth, which lengthen the jaw, so that it gets both wider and longer. And if you do that at a young age, sort of before the age of nine, you can get really big changes to this part of the face. And I think Mrs. Newman could see that quite soon. Subsequently, we then proceeded with stage two and three. That is the mainly the plans to train the child to keep their mouth shut. So essentially, the first stage is enlarging the jaws. The second stage is training the child to have the correct posture, not only with their lips shut, but with their tongue on their palate and um, with their teeth just touching lightly most of the time. We started treatment for Emily, I think, when she was eight years old. Um, the initial stage is very quick, just four months. Um, all the rest of the time um, was mainly keep training her to keep her mouth shut. At one time, I do remember um, that she had failed to do that, and as a result, the teeth had relapsed a bit, and we had to retreat her, mainly just the widening of the upper jaw, moving it forward again. This is really quite common with people who have difficulty in learning to keep their mouth shut. Anyway, we continued, and after about four months, I was content with the position of the teeth, the bones, and the whole case. But at that point, she still was not keeping her lips together. So I said it would be wise if you could continue to wear this at night. What the appliance at night does 
is touch on the gum if you drop the jaw. Therefore, it's just a reminder to keep the jaw shut all night, every night. And most children who have to keep their mouths shut all night, every night themselves, remember it's not um, making them keep their jaw shut, they themselves are making themselves keep their mouth shut. That will usually train them to do this naturally, but even then some people are better than others and I know Emily still leaves her lips apart some four millimetres or more. I just um, had the pleasure of meeting Emily again now, having not seen her for how many years? Ten. Ten years. <laughs> and uh, um, I'm pleased that all her teeth are as straight as they could be. Um, however, I can see that because her lip seal is not quite right yet, her whole face is slightly bad. She tells me her wisdom teeth haven't come in yet, and I'm concerned that there is not quite room for them. If you get um, the full Ford growth, there should be room for every tooth and we never need to do any extraction.